Hello, um, my name is Lorraine Eden. I'm a professor emerita of management at Texas A&M University and a research professor of law also at Texas A&M. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak a few words to you at Condor's first global, global summer conference, which is being held August the 4th and 5th. Uh, I'm in San Diego, so the time zone isn't quite convenient. So this is being recorded. And uh, so my apologies for not being with you in person, but I hope my comments today may be useful to you as you gather at Condor's uh, conference to talk about international tax, transfer pricing, and how the world economy is changing in the what we call the VUCA situation in which we live, the volatile, uncertain, complex, uh, ambiguous world that now surrounds us today in the global economy. Well, I've been asked to talk a little bit about my joining the United Nations Subcommittee on Transfer Pricing and to give you a little bit of a background on that. And I'm delighted to do that. And I thought it might be helpful for me to sort of situate um, what I think I'm going to be doing over the next, uh, next three years by talking a little bit about the structure uh, of how international tax and transfer pricing is handled at the global level today. You know, of course, that we have national regulations. Uh, each individual country has its own tax rules. But we also have the opportunity for countries to get together, uh, particularly governments uh, and tax authorities to get together and try to do some coordination and cooperation in the tax sphere. And there are two basic ways those are done. The first is through the United Nations, and the second is through the OECD. The United Nations, of course, is far broader. There are what, nearly, I think, nearly 200 members now of the United Nations, and I believe 38 members of the OECD. So the UN basically represents every country in the world today and brings them together. It brings them together in terms of tax, specifically in terms of the Economic and Social Committee, right? The Economic and Social Council, or the S you used to call ESCO of the UN is the unit that is responsible for international tax. So we have the Economic and Social Council, and then within that, we have something called the Committee of Experts on International Cooperation in Tax Matters. Now that's really a mouthful. Right, the Committee of Experts on International Cooperation and Tax Matters. So nobody calls it that. They simply refer to it as the UN Tax Committee or UNTC, the UN Tax Committee. This is not a new committee. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my first introductions to this committee went back to my being a PhD student when I was thinking about my dissertation proposal and I had approached my um, faculty advisor, John Head at Dalhousie University and asked for, I said, Professor Head, would you chair my dissertation? Um, and he said, he said, Lorraine, he said, my dissertation chair is coming to spend a year at Dalhousie University. And I think you, sh you should have him chair your dissertation. So in effect, Professor Head's dissertation chair would potentially be mine. So what happened was Professor Head wrote a letter to his dissertation chair, who was Carl Sumner Schaup at Columbia University, and asked Professor Schaup if he would take on one new PhD student, one last PH of his many dozens of PhD students. And my life as a professional academic really twisted on the answer that Carl wrote back to that letter when he said, I've been appointed to the Committee on Eminent Persons at the United Nations on Tax Matters, an ad hoc committee, and I've been tasked to write about international tax and specifically to write about transfer pricing, and I'll take on one last PhD student if and only if she writes on transfer pricing. 
So my introduction to the world of transfer pricing came through this ad hoc committee of eminent persons on international tax of which Carl Schaup was a member of the committee. And because he was writing on transfer pricing, I became in effect his research assistant. Uh, so my history with the UN tax committee goes back um, a long way to the 1970s. So I'm, 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 for me, this is, is an opportunity to uh, coming on to the subcommittee on transfer pricing is a real opportunity. Okay, so as I said, we have the UN system. We have the Economic and Social Council. One of its activities is this UN tax committee that is made up of a variety of experts. There are 25 members of this committee. They are nominated by their governments and they serve in their own individual capacity, not as representatives of their governments. Now, almost everyone on that committee actually is a very senior, often the most senior member of tax in their own administration. And they're there for typically now four years. So the new committee was appointed in October 2021, so uh, last October, and will serve for four years through to October 2025. The committee is made up, this, this time the new committee is made up of slightly more than half developing countries and the rest are developed member countries. Um, many of them are members of the OECD, but many of them are not. Many of them are members of the inclusive framework, but not all of them are members. The two co-chairs of the UN Tax Committee are Lisa Lotkana and Matthew Bonjubola. And they have a lot of work over the next four years as co-chairs of this committee because the work of the committee is actually quite large and demanding. Over time, the work has expanded significantly from what it was in the 1970s when my dissertation chair was on, was on that committee as an academic representative. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the role, I think, of the UN Tax Committee in general. I think as an academic, it's very helpful to stand back and think of this in a big picture way. And I'm going to reference some stuff that is fundamental in international political economy and well known by political scientists and, and law professors, but probably not very well known outside that by general practitioners. And that's the idea of thinking of the way that countries come together internationally as to foster cooperation, to foster coordination, and the development of what we think of as international regimes. So regimes can be set up to actually coordinate activities across countries, for example, in climate change or, for example, uh, plugs that plug in the wall what they're on. They can come together to cooperate on international matters, too, to try and take issues that are very difficult to solve at one level within the country that have spillovers to other countries and it makes sense to do them together. And it's very clear that the international tax realm is a realm that really does need coordination and cooperation among nation states to be an effective in terms of international tax. Now, what, what regime scholars will tell you is there's really sort of four levels that we think about in terms of the characteristics and the activities of, of, a, of a regime. International regimes are about principles, norms, rules, and procedures. And so I think of the UN Tax Committee as actually being an organization that represents all the countries in the world. And it is the body for dealing with international cooperation and coordination in the area of international tax. It does have principles, norms, rules, and procedures. The principles I think are, are well understood by those of us who work in international tax uh, whether it's in law or in economics and public finance, I think of them as focusing on equity, on efficiency, on neutrality, on transparency, and administrative feasibility. So it's like five major principles that guide the development of the international tax system. What I mean by that is, is uh, the international tax rules should be fair and be seen to be fair. 
They should be efficient as much as we possibly can. We need to do uh, efficient and effective policy development. Taxes primarily, unless there's a deliberate reason, should be neutral. In other words, they should not interfere with decision-making. They should be transparent so they can be well understood. And lastly, and this is by no means the least consideration, they need to be administratively feasible. They have to be able to be done. And when large part of the world are, are developing countries where tax administrations may not have capacity, the issue of administrative feasibility is, is a really very important issue. So that's an issue about which the UN Tax Committee, I think, really needs to be charged and needs to put this into place. So these are the broad principles of the international tax system. The norms are the standards of behaviors, the shoulds and the should nots about what we expect. So for example, in transfer pricing, I think of the arms length principle as a standard or a norm. Norm. It basically says that transfer prices between related entities should be priced as if they were conducted by arms length parties under the same set of facts and circumstances. That's exactly what 482 says in the United States. And it's the sentence in most countries' tax codes today in terms of international uh, transfer pricing of related party transactions and the amount of allocation of profits that should be put worldwide. So there are a variety of, of norms like, uh, like this. Uh, residence and source principles, for example, uh, destination and uh, um, destination and uh, origin principles are other other forms of standards of behavior that are set up to sort of guide uh, the setting up of the international tax system. Then you move down to the specifics of the rules. Well, we have lots of rules, <laughs> lots of rules, regulations, as, as you know, 482, which is what a little paragraph in the, uh, in the US tax code has hundreds and hundreds of pages in the IRS regulations for 482. Those are all the very specifics of what it means to implement those norms and standards of behavior and are supposed to guide uh, and reflect the principles for the international tax system. And then last but not least is dispute settlement. Uh, in a world where we're trying to have a large number of countries that have sovereign rights to set up their own tax systems, Right, there are bound to be conflicts in terms of spillovers and externalities between countries. And therefore there are gonna be disputes. And for that reason, we have tax treaties and we have mutual agreement procedures and we have a variety of dispute settlement mechanisms. So if you, let me sum up. If you think about the international tax system, I think of it as a layer of basic principles that I think we all believe in should guide that system a set of norms and standards of behavior by which we hope countries will be governed and that corporations will be governed that design to help achieve those principles. And then we have the detailed hundreds of pages of rules and regulations implementing those. And then last but not least is all the variety of dispute settlement mechanisms. Now, let me bring that back to the UN Tax Committee. You look at the UN Tax Committee's mandates, that's exactly what it's doing. It's actually trying to implement the principles of a good international tax system, achieve the norms and standards of behavior, and then try to harmonize um, and, and also build new rules that facilitate the harmonization of the tax rules around the world, and then foster ways to settle disputes amicably among countries. Now, the UN actually has, and you can now go to the website and look at the list. You look at the list of publications and what you see is exactly this. One of the most and longest standing roles of the UN Tax Committee has been the double tax convention between developed and developing countries, which goes back, I believe, to the 70s in the group of 77 in setting up the issue of a model tax convention that tries to balance the, how shall I say it, the goals and aims of developed and developing countries. 
Then there is something that, and for transfer pricing professionals is really important, which is the practical manual on transfer pricing that has been now is in its third edition. And then there are a variety of handbooks and guidelines that are coming out now much more frequently through the UN Tax Committee and through its various subcommittees. And so you can see, you can if you go to the website, these are all downloadable and useful and specifically de designed to help particularly developing countries that lack major capacity to implement a good international tax design and help solve, help solve disputes. Now, let me just say that Let's talk a little bit briefly about some of the subcommittees that are there. There's a large number of subcommittees as you might expect. And of course, up at the top of the list is ones that has to do with that double tax convention, which are always focusing on those. And one of the new ones, of course, if you have been following work in this area, as you know, is uh, 12 B, 12A and 12B, which um, bring in withholding taxes for various kinds of technical payments and digital services, digital services payments, introducing withholding taxes that a country can levy for outpayments here uh, for various forms of technical services. So this, you see the focus on the convention very much so and on dispute resolution as part of this. A new piece I think you see here is a focus on the SDGs. The Sustainable Development Goals, the agenda is supposed to be settled in 2030. I think it's highly unlikely um, given COVID, um, given the variety of disputes uh, around the world that we will make the 2030 agenda and we will need something past the Sustainable Development Goals. But it is very clear that the UN Tax Committee has been charged with thinking about taxation and the SDGs, which it should do. Clearly, there are opportunities in working on international tax and working on country level taxes to think about fostering the SDGs to and the goal of the SDGs to leave no one behind. Now, there are a variety of other committees, one of which is the Transfer Pricing Committee, of which I'm a, a new member. There's a committee on taxing extractive industries, and it has a new manual out in the last couple of years on taxing of extractive industries. There's one on environmental taxation, which is focusing on CO2 emissions. Uh, uh, clearly one on dispute settlement, which is four of the major components of the international regime. And there's one on tax transparency. Again, as I said, one of the major underlying principles of a good tax system is tax transparency. And then there are clearly, uh, clearly work going on on digitalization of the economy, including 12B, but also on other components. Then there are focuses on health taxes, wealth taxes, um, VAT taxes, and a variety, a variety of other taxes. So basically the UN Tax Committee is divided up into a group of subcommittees. Now, the members of the subcommittees are not necessarily nominated by their individual governments. They, they can be a mix. Um, the transfer pricing one that I'm on actually has uh, academics, uh, big four representatives, NGOs, uh, and it has a variety of government representatives too. The subcommittees, just like the tax committee, all serve in their capacity too. In other words, they don't serve as representatives of where they are employed. They serve in their own capacity. And they report to the UN Tax Committee. Each of the subcommittees is tasked with one of these streams of one of these streams of work. And I want to talk to you just a little bit about the one that I'm involved in, which is the transfer pricing one. We have actually a really big agenda that was developed over, first proposed, um, I believe last fall, and uh, proposed, formally proposed in um, March, asked for inputs in April, and then in June, we were formally appointed to the committee and assigned tasks. There are seven work streams, of which they, I will just briefly review them. The first is on primary products. So the focus is on looking at a variety of primary products, global value chains in those products, transfer pricing uh, for those products. 
Um, we're going to start with uh, some commodities and actually develop sort of um, in effect taking the UN transfer pricing model and applying it to industry case studies, first of all in primary products. I'm also on the second one, which is the pharmaceutical industry, which is going to do the same thing. Again, focusing on the value chain in pharma, looking at uh, the various types of related party transactions, the which ones, functions, assets, and risks of particular types of entities and particular transactions, and then appropriate transfer pricing methods that can be used for those and sources of data. Again, the focus is primarily on assisting developing country tax authorities in thinking about how to implement the UN um, manual on transfer pricing and the arm's length standard. The third one is on toolkits, uh, specifically focusing on risk assessment. In, in other words, what I mean here is saying a tax authority is interested in determining which types of activities and transactions may be more likely uh, to um, face tax abuse. Uh, and loss of income, which ones are more likely to generate significant risk for the tax authority. And so the third one is looking at thinking of uh, different metrics for this. The fourth one is focused on uh, what in Canada we would call GAR, general anti-avoidance mechanisms or general anti-avoidance regulations, and the work that Brian Arnold has done for years in this area. These are focused on domestic anti-avoidance rules, the building of domestic rules to prevent anti-avoidance of taxes. And then there's one specifically on uh, the environment and CO2 uh, emission certificates. There is one specifically related to downturns in COVID-19. There is a general one on dispute settlement as, uh, as I mentioned earlier. And then lastly, all of these groups are tasked to think about this in the context of the SDGs. And I'm just checking to make sure I haven't, haven't missed any here, but I don't think so. CO2 downturns, I don't think I have reached them all on here. So um, as I said, um, I, I will be in, I've been assigned to work, be involved in two of them, primary products and value chains and transfer pricing and pharma. There are a variety of work groups that are doing um, um, other issues in addition to transfer pricing as I've outlined. And what I would say is my impression is the UN Tax Committee is very open to input. It would welcome inputs from um, the professional committees. In other words, what I'm saying is from NGOs, uh, from the um, major multinational enterprises, and their international tax and transfer pricing professionals from other countries. While there's only 25 members on the UN Tax Committee and there's only 25 members on the Transfer Pricing Committee. So the committees are small. The overall tax committee is quite small. It, it I think, enables uh, the, the ability to move and connect faster and maybe move further than a much, much larger group would do. So uh, the committee, on ta the tax committee meets twice a year. It'll meet uh, once this fall in Geneva in October. And um, actually I'll meet New York, I meet in New York, I believe. No, meets in, I think, Geneva this October and in New York next spring. And so it meets twice a year. The, the various subcommittees are primarily meeting over Zoom or teams, so we're doing work digitally together. We have our own uh, first transfer pricing subcommittee meeting at the beginning of September of the 25 members with each of the work streams reporting. So if you have comments or suggestions, uh, we would be welcome uh, and open to uh, your ad advice here. And uh, I think would be very glad to have to have that in, have that input from you um, on, on here. And so let me sort of wrap up and say, uh, I hope that your meetings with Condor are, are very productive. I'm sure they, they will be. I send you my best wishes here. And uh, I think we, 
would like to all see the international tax regime achieve the goals of efficiency, of effectiveness, uh, of equity, of neutrality, of transparency, and administrative feasibility. Uh, we need to come together in fora such as the UN Tax Committee, which represents all countries in the world. It's not like just like the OECD group they, where the focus is really on the 38 members of the OECD. Um, it's not sort of the inclusive forum, which is the group of countries around the OECD, which are included in these discussions. The UN Tax Committee has, I think, a very unique role to play here as a small group that can come up with innovative solutions that can, with the focus primarily of trying to assist developing country tax administrations in achieving a greater and fairer distribution of the world's resources um, with the long run goal, frankly, of leaving no one, leaving no one behind uh, as the SDG agenda focuses. So let me wrap up and say, I'm delighted that Condor uh, in Hungary has invited me to speak. I hope that my comments are helpful in thinking about the next four years um, uh, of this committee, and that uh, you will you will get you will participate and get involved. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>